Well, this is the astronaut gallery here. These are all the crews of uh, missions uh, with uh, U.S. involvement uh, from the very first flight of uh, Alan Shepard until the last uh, expedition in the International Space Station. Uh, so I was uh, four times on the space shuttle, STS-46, 61, 75, and 103. So I should be somewhere here. If I try to look for STS-46, I have it here. This was my first flight in uh, the summer of uh, 1992. So this is the crew, seven crew members. Uh, Lauren Shriver was a commander, uh, Andy Allen and the other crew members. We had the first Italian astronaut on board, Franco Malerba. Uh, that's why you have the Italian flag here, the Swiss flag, because I was, uh, and still am, a Swiss citizen flying in space. Start, two, one, boost with mission, and lift off of the space shuttle discovery returning to the space station. The objective was to release a scientific platform, Eureka, European Retrieval Carrier into space, and then to test the so-called tethered satellite, a satellite at the end of a conducting cable, to evaluate the capability to generate electrical power in space without using solar rays. First flight, uh, the discovery of the wonderful features of uh, space flight, uh, the weightlessness, but at the same time uh, the work, the responsibility to accomplish the mission goal. And here we are playing our volleyball Olympic Games, uh, Switzerland against Italy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a good way of keeping in shape in space. So we continue, we go here, and bang, it's the 61. And uh, this is the crew again, seven crew members. The Hubble Space Telescope had been deployed in space in 1990, in the spring of 1990, and they had some problems. This is mission specialist Claude Nicolier. Nicolier is the individual who uh, was at the controls of the robot arm when uh, the arm was, was used to reach out and grab onto the Hubble Space Telescope. An optical problem, uh, we had a problem with the solar rays and uh, other components that had uh, failed or that were not working properly, like the optical system. So we had to go fix it. And this was, in a way, a rescue mission for the Hubble Space Telescope, a wonderful mission for me. As I was originally an astrophysicist and I had become an astronaut, to go and, and uh, fix Hubble together with my six uh, other crew members was a really wonderful mission. This was my greatest mission, the first servicing mission of Hubble. The next one is STS-75, so we continue going uh, to the right. Bang, STS-75, my third flight in uh, the spring of uh, 1996. And you see here the satellite in the middle of uh, the crew members, the satellite at the end of a lead that we deployed upwards. And the commander, Andy Allen, has uh, emerged from the building, followed by his pilot, Scott Horowitz, and payload commander, Franklin Chang Diaz, mission specialist, Jeffrey Hoffman, mission specialist, Claude Nicolier. In a way, this was a repeat, at least part of the mission was a repeat of what we had tried to do in 1992 on my first mission. 
uh, the tethered satellite, that satellite at the end of a conducting cable that we deployed upwards, uh, with the cable being pretty much vertical, or the local vertical, uh, it didn't work very well the first time, so we redid it, and this is a TSS-1R, tethered satellite system, 1R, R for repeat. It's like an electric generator. You move an electrical conductor in a magnetic field, you generate a, a voltage, and uh, if you can close the circuit via the ionosphere, then you can generate also a current, then you have electrical power. Much more success this time, we could deploy the satellite to about 20 kilometers. Unfortunately, the cable broke, the conducting cable broke, and we lost the satellite and, uh, and the tether. So the tether has broken at the, uh, at the boom. The tether has broken, it is going away from it. Way. And we got it for a minute or so, but it is going away from it. Yes, sir, well, those are some tether dynamics we did not want to see. But anyway, we could do a lot of um, interesting discoveries during the whole deployment of the generation of electrical power during the deployment, pretty much the induction effect. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Claude. We're looking in the window at you. Then we go to my last flight, which was SCS 103. 103, all my friends and colleagues. 103 here. Just before the end of the century, it was in December 1999, another visit to Hubble. This time we had a pretty severe problem with gyroscopes. Six gyroscopes and four had failed and only two gyroscope functioning was not enough to allow the telescope to do precise pointing of celestial targets, so we had to go and fix it. Mission STS-103 saw seven astronauts launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida during the final days of the 20th century. Their task? To pursue the Hubble Space Telescope, secure it to their space shuttle Discovery, and by means of three spacewalks, carry out vital servicing and maintenance of the remarkable telescope. Great mission, and uh, for me the opportunity to do spacewalks, which is of course a, a major step in the, uh, in, the, in the life of an astronaut. Going to space is one thing, but when you have an opportunity to, uh, to go out um, in your spacesuits and uh, do work outside, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful adventure. Uh, we lifted off on the 19th of uh, December, so shortly before Christmas, and uh, we had to go back, to, to come back uh, before the end of the year because uh, NASA did not want to have a shuttle uh, on orbit around the Earth as a transition from 99 to the year 2000 because a lot of electronic systems, and uh, NASA was uh, uh, concerned about the Y2K, that the switch from 99 to the year 2000. These missions to Hubble were very dear to me. Uh, again, as an astrophysicist who had become an astronaut, to go and fix that jewel in space, jewel for uh, knowledge and astrophysics for all astronomers uh, on the Earth, uh, mainly on the American side and the European side, because it's a cooperation project between NASA and the European Space Agencies. And the telescope quickly passes over our heads, and it's uh, really an impressive sight. It, uh almost makes you want to duck while you're in the cockpit. And it's hard to tell here, but the telescope is rapidly uh, proceeding away from the orbiter. You can see the uh, aperture door open on the telescope. Here we are getting some uh, good pictures of Hubble. This shows the, the, the strength and the value of uh, human space exploration. This has been a very healthy program, a lot of discoveries, and uh, it's not only the 
uh, technical and the scientific achievements, but it's also the fact that it's people working together. Uh, when you consider that, for instance, United States and uh, Russia are working together uh, with a handshake uh, uh, spirit in the International Space Station, and uh, they don't always agree here on planet Earth, but uh, space is one area where people work together. And uh, there are also guidelines about the behavior in space. Uh, whenever anybody is in trouble in space, uh, the other nations, space-faring nations, will go and do everything to help uh, resolve the problem. So there's really this spirit of cooperation of uh, space is absolutely wonderful. In a way, it's an example of uh, what should happen here on the surface of planet Earth, the spirit of space exploration.